Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game 14 Frantic Minutes by Crazy Like a Box. It plays one to four players, takes roughly 14 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game 14 Frantic Minutes, you are playing as a scientist working for an eccentric doctor. However, what you thought was going to be a climate change solution has actually become a doomsday weapon that you and your coworkers have been working on. When you realize this, you decide it's time to leave the compound, but the doctor is on his way and you have 14 minutes before lockdown. Will you guys escape or be trapped in to continue the work of the mad doctor? Find out in the game 14 frantic minutes where I explain how to set it up, how to play, and of course my review. Before setting up the game 14 frantic minutes, the first thing you want to decide is how difficult you want the game to be. There is a range of difficulty levels going from the easiest mode up to the extremely challenging modes. There are five different decks, numbers one, two, three, four, and five, and each of them have a certain number of cards. You'll shuffle those up and you'll deal them out into this type of a placement here. The placement that you see here currently is the easy mode variant. So let's go ahead and get into the setup of the game. To begin setting up the easy mode variant of the game, you'll need to set out and display these cards here. A one, two, a three, a one, two, a three, and a four. Then you're also gonna to place tokens above the A slot, B, C, D, and the E slot of the card system. These are gonna be face down, they're like hidden knowledge that you'll get as you unlock the levels. Then, if you're playing a four player game, give each player a set of these tokens. If you're playing a three, two, or a one player game, there's a different mode of setup that will allow each player to have a certain number of these piles and then there's going to be an extra slot for where everybody can use together. Then place the mad scientist or mad doctor on the far left hand side of the cards, give everybody a player reference, shuffle the main deck of tiles or boards in the game, and deal one out face up in front of all players within reach of all players. After that to begin the game you're simply going to take the tile and you're going to flip it up and then you're going to go ahead and reveal the first card of the game and the first token that's going to go into the pool for all players to use and begin the timer. There are two timers you can use. One is going to be a soundtrack that's included in the game as well as a sand timer could be used as well. After that, the time is to begin and you start your 14 minute journey. <laughs> Playing the game 14 frantic minutes is as simple as setting it up. The first thing that you're going to do is after hitting the timer or starting the sand timer, whatever you wanna use the soundtrack, you're going to begin. And you'll have a certain amount of time to progress through each of these cards. And each of these cards represents a tile or a player board, or I guess the main board of the game that you'll be utilizing to place the circuitry on. Your objective is to connect the main box, the status override processing box here, with the colored terminals presented on the card. This card here is going to be a yellow and a green one, which means you need to make sure you connect the box to the yellow and the green circuits on the board. And how do you do that? Well, you're going to be connecting them via using these tiles here. You'll be placing these guys down and you'll be trying to make kind of a roadmap. You can place them pretty much anywhere that you would like, as long as you follow a certain number of rules. And there's a great detail example of how this works on the Kickstarter, but I'll give you the rough overview. Basically, you can place any of these, uh, but only your own tiles or ones that are in like a free zone that everyone can use on the board. They don't need to connect instantly, but they'll need to connect from the main circuitry to the small nodes by the end of the game or by the end of the specific uh, card here so you can move on. You can not, never place on spaces that have a border that are blocking it or on the outside of the game board. You may never place on top of somebody else's marker unless a game rule says otherwise. And you have to make sure that each of the spaces connect to the nodes that they need to connect to based on the card that you're trying to solve. So in this case here, I have a yellow and a green. And I'm going to need to line this guy up and move around the board with the circuits in order so that they connect. So I'll be trying to go from here all the way to here and from from here all the way down to here. And each of the tiles here represent different types of modules or uh, circuitry that have different ways in which they can connect with the other modules slash circuitry. And once you have completed this one here, so you've gotten the main power node to the two small nodes, then what you're going to do is you're going to flip over a new tile 
and you're going to flip over the next card and you're going to then try and solve that one. And you have a certain amount of time as well to do this. And you'll need to connect it to a red and a green and so on and so forth. And you'll just keep doing that throughout the game. Now, while you're doing this, you are being timed and the doctor is coming to get you. And so every certain amount of time or every specific amount of time as it passes on the soundtrack, you'll have like a door closed. And that means that this guy is coming from one room to the next to try and get to you. And if he ever reaches the space that you're currently working on, you are going to lose the game. However, if you can stay at least one step ahead of him as you continue progressing throughout this laboratory, then by the time the game ends, if you've gotten there before he reaches you, you win. But like I said, if at any point in time this doctor gets to your space, that is going to end the game. Whenever you get to a room with a bonus tile or a bonus piece uh, above it, you'll be able to utilize that. And there are four unique bonus pieces in the game. There's a four-way connector that allows you to connect tiles in four different ways. There's a bypass that lets you place these on top of certain uh, types of uh, computer chips. There's like a circuitry pieces right here that you can kind of bypass. And you have the switcher. This is going to allow you to switch one colored node with a rainbow node that you can use that will count towards your objective. And the deactivation marker. This is going to to allow you to deactivate one of the nodes that is required on the card that you're currently working on. So use these when you best see fit, but remember that you have a limited number of them and it's best to make sure that when you come across a challenging node, that is the time in which you need to use it. And of course, only people who can use the chips in front of them or the, the tiles in front of them are the players that own them. So you can never touch anybody else's piece, you can only touch your own. That's basically the idea of the game, getting from one area to the next on these boards, progressing from card to card, flipping over new cards that will then allow you to try and connect from the next node to the next node, making sure you get to the final one, which is obviously the most difficult, before the scientist, the mad doctor, reaches you. Can you do that in 14 frantic minutes? Find out by backing the Kickstarter. Okay, let's talk about the game now. So for those of you who've played games like Five Minute Dungeon and the Escape Game from Queen, uh, you're gonna be pretty familiar with the style of play. This is a cooperative game in which you work together simultaneously to race against the clock, race against the doctor, going from one of the boards here to the next board, utilizing the cards here that illustrate which type of circuits you need to reach and how quickly you have to do so. Utilizing what little resources that you have in combination with working together and communicating what pieces that might be needed in order to connect nodes on a circuit board to get from one piece to the next. Each of your nodes is unique to you and will have a unique twist to them and how you can utilize them. Some of them are smaller nodes. They're gonna have uh, basically one, a smaller circuitry, I should say, which have um, a smaller connections. Uh, these things are really cool because you can rotate them, you can flip them, you can kind of decide how you want to place them on the board and communication is extremely key in this game. I love games that are kind of dexterous in a way. They're a bit of a puzzle, but they're also a bit of a challenge because you only have so much time to complete them. I'm a huge fan of Five Minute Dungeon. I like the Escape Room game as well, even though I'm not so great at it. And this one will probably be in the same range of those games. This is a challenging game. You will have to think on your feet. You will have to make sure you get the nodes correct in order for them to reach the correct, uh, so the, from one board to the different nodes. In order for you to get those exact pieces to line up, you'll need to make sure you do this with precision. And taking the pieces off and putting them back on, it's going to be challenging. There's gonna be people yelling and screaming in this game, take this off, put that on, or it's going to be one of those games of silent like calculation depending on your play group. But either way, I've had a lot of fun playing this game. If you like a dexterity game that's got a rich amount of gameplay, there's going to be constant replayability because each player will play differently based on the type of tiles that they have and who they are working with. Then you are going to really enjoy 14 frantic minutes. Uh, this game here has really, really nice artwork. You are going to know where to place the pieces where you cannot place the pieces. You'll know what the different uh, circuitry boards do and how they interact. It's pretty straightforward as to how they connect. Some of them have unique little twists and turns that will allow you to connect them in certain areas you wouldn't normally think they would. So this one here actually has three separate uh, spaces in which you can connect pieces and others are going to have kind of like a curve to them as well or an extra little branch off that will allow you to connect them in certain ways that will kind of branch
branch off paths. And that's cool. It's also cool that just because uh, you have placed pieces on the board that don't interact in any way, it's not going to cost you as long as you're able to connect and finish the board, in which you'll take off all the pieces, flip over the next tile, and continue. A quality of the game. So this is a prototype, obviously, of the game. I'm sure there's probably going to be some more in it. I've played the Relics of Rajahara. That was the previous game, and that came with extra little pieces of content that really enhance the gameplay as well. And I imagine this will have the same or similar uh, mechanisms to it as well. I also like the difficulty. You can kind of increase it as you get better. Starting off on the easy mode is highly expected of you, and I should suggest that you do so because it is challenging, or at least for me and my play groups. We had a hard time making sure we got all the specific circuitry to the different small nodes in the game board, making sure they connected in the right way and didn't go over or underlapping certain things. When players mess up, which will happen, I always suggest it just, okay, just, you know, cancel out, redo it, but we're still going to go by the timer. And if that scientist or doctor ever reaches us, then okay, we have failed and you know, we'll have to just start over again. Games can end quite abruptly. You can not even complete the first node, or it's going to be an edge of your seat game, which is going to get to the very last one. And will you have enough time to complete the most difficult one? And that's where the game truly shines. That's where it's going to be played at the best. Um, other than just the insane difficulty that the game can ensue upon you, uh, you're going to enjoy this game. I had a lot of fun with it. I don't think I had any or heard any qualms in the table between anybody else who was like, had any negative things to say. And I guess it's just going to come down to, do you like dexterity-ish type puzzle games that have kind of a timer involved that's going to make you kind of think on your feet? Uh, do you enjoy games that involve utilizing different pieces that you have to work together with and have communication? And if so, then this is a game I would strongly suggest you take a look at. But if it's not your cup of tea, and I imagine for some people this is going to be more of a niche game because of the things that are required of you in order to successfully accomplish your goal in the game, then maybe it's not. But for me, I really enjoyed this game. I'm a big fan of 5 Minute Dungeon, and this kind of gave me another little taste of that, but in a unique new way that I had never seen done before. So yes, seal of approval for 14 frantic minutes. Do you want to pick it up? There's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game 14 Frantic Minutes by Crazy Like a Box. If you're interested in picking up the game, like I said, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, bell notification button, and more to see more of our videos here. Let us know, is this a game that would interest you? 14 Frantic Minutes? Why or why not? Do you like the idea of having a high stress type of game where you're trying to constantly stay one step ahead of what the game wants you to do? And the constant difficulty increases is something that you pick up and uh, I actually be more curious to know if, if it, why you wouldn't want to pick up this type of a game because I'm going to imagine for most people it's going to be because of the stress and puzzly nature of it which of course my wife loves and for me while it, be, it is frustrating this is one of those ones that didn't bother me so much because I wasn't working on my own puzzle I got to work with everybody else's. We have a live stream every Sunday at 6 30 p.m. PST. Well this Sunday you will see us play 14 frantic minutes for yourself and determine if it's a game that you would enjoy. It's a nice way to see how players interact with the game, players that are not necessarily always gamers, and they'll kind of come across it and play it and you'll say, okay, this is a game that I would like based on my friend group or these type of people represent my group. And so that's kind of why we do it. Anyway, that's going to be at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch and most likely on YouTube and multi-streamed on Facebook as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to uh, delving in the laboratory with you for 14 minutes. <laughs> next time.